Uh, today we're going to read from Acts chapter 16, beginning with verse 16, Acts 16, 16. And the basic theme for today is simply, if God tells you to do something, do it. If God tells you to do something, do it without delay. Acts chapter 16, the Apostle Paul is in a town called Philippi, named after Philip of Macedonia, the father of Alexander the Great. And um, that and 35 cents will buy you nothing. But anyway, Acts 16 verse 16 says, Once as we were on our way to prayer, Luke is writing this, and so Luke is the we who's with the Apostle Paul. Um, A a slave girl met us who had a spirit in which she predicted the future. She made a large profit for her owners by fortune telling. As she followed Paul and us, Silas is with them as well, she cried out, These men who are proclaiming the way of salvation are the servants of the Most High God. She did this for many days. Paul Became great, was greatly annoyed. I love that. So after all, you can just kind of see Paul putting up with it for a while, putting up with it for a while, putting up with what, and finally saying, all right, I've had enough of this. Turning, turning to the spirit, Paul said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out right away. Now it kind of makes you wonder, why did he wait so long? If he could have done that, it's interesting. I'll tell you, this is why he waited so long, because he didn't want this to happen. When her owners realized that their hope for profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Bring them before the chief magistrates. They said, these men are seriously disturbing our city. They are Jews and are uh, promoting customs that are not legal for us as Romans to adopt or practice. They didn't realize at that point that Paul was also a Roman. And um, notice that they have to lie to get Paul and Silas in, in, uh, in trouble because well, these accusations are not true. But anyway, the crowd joined in the attack against them and the chief magistrates, st- magistrates stripped off their clothes and ordered them to be beaten with rods. Again, that's one of those places you read scripture and say, okay, Lord, am I willing to share Jesus, if there's potential that I get beaten with rods. After they had severely flogged them, they threw them in jail, ordering the jailer to guard them carefully. Receiving such an order, he put them into the inner prison and secured their feet in stocks. Now think about what's just happened. They've been beaten with rods. They've been flogged severely. They're bloody. They're they're exhausted. They're thirsty. They're miserable. Now they're being put in basically the most secure place in the prison. So what do they do? Verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Isn't that one of the wonderful passages, one of the wonderful verses in Scripture? When you've been all th- through all of that, how can you be singing hymns to God? Um, I'll tell you how. When you're convinced that God is always at work in your life, you go even through bad things and say, God's still in control. God must be up to something good. I just don't see it yet. And I'm just going to focus on obeying God and worshiping God and being thankful to God and trust that God is up to something good that I can't see. That's how you can sing and praise hymns, at least uh, sing, sing praises to God in those times. At least theoretically, that's what I believe. And I know that other people have done that. I, and I know that's true. It's just, if I'm in that position, I'm not sure. I sure hope that I would have the character to do that. Verse 26. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake. See, this position that Paul and Silas are in puts God in a perfect position to do something amazing. Such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the jail were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains came loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the doors of the prison standing open, he drew his sword and was going to kill himself since he thought the prisoners had escaped because... 
if he had allowed the prisoners to escape, it, they were going to kill him. That was, his, that was the sentence for a jailer for allowing prisoners to escape. But Paul called out in a loud voice, don't harm yourself because we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He escorted them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? You see, that jailer was listening to Paul and Silas. Not only hearing them pray and sing, but certainly he'd heard Paul and Silas preaching in Philippi. He hadn't had the courage yet to surrender to Christ. But now he knows that Jesus is true. What do I need to do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved, you and your household. Anybody in your household who wants to believe can be saved. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him along with everyone in the house. So they taught them about Christ, that Jesus is Messiah, that Jesus forgives sin, that Jesus rose from the dead, that he's coming back. Verse 33, and they took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. Right away, he and his family, he and all his family were baptized. He brought them into the house and set a meal before them and rejoiced because he had come to believe in God with his entire household. Isn't that a wonderful story? When God calls you to share Jesus, go share Jesus. You may end up getting beaten for it. You may end up going to jail for it. But God is always up to something good. And if you've never given your life to Jesus, and you're wondering, what do, I need to do, what do I need to do to be saved? Here the Apostle Paul says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Whoever believes, whoever wants to follow. And then I love this. It's the middle of the night. Verse 33, the very same hour of the night, they washed their wounds and the family was baptized. They didn't wait till morning. They didn't wait until, you know, for a month to go by. You know, I know that's where some of you are right now. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to be baptized. And your question, should I wait? Well, I want you to take the, follow the advice, follow the, the example of this little boy in this video that we're about to show you. And then we'll come back and close. This morning, uh, we have accepted Christ as his Savior and as his Lord and he will demonstrate his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, by willingly being baptized this morning. He's been waiting on this day a long time. <laughs> and so, Jordan, upon the profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> So, I hope you appreciated that video as much as I did. Two lessons that we learned from that video. The first lesson is, preachers talk too much. But that's not much of a lesson because we already knew that. The second lesson is, my prayer is that God would all make, make, make us all like little Jordan. I mean, that kid just did not want, he could not wait another second to obey what Jesus was calling him to do. He didn't want to be baptized. What is God calling you to do today? What act of obedience out of love for him? Maybe it's sharing your faith. Maybe it's getting involved in a group. Maybe it's serving a neighbor. Maybe it's offering to pray for somebody. Maybe it's to be baptized. Whatever he's calling you to do, don't put it off another minute. Like little Jordan, obey immediately. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that it's living and active. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would use your word today to encourage us to be immediately obedient to you for your glory. It's through Christ I pray these things. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. 
And if you found this encouraging, maybe you want to share it with somebody else. I hope you'll uh, join us this Sunday for worship as well. Um, and until then, let's keep praying for each other.